a spool, a reel, a double ender, a DSMB, or an SMB. In today's video, we're going to go over all three of these. We're going to be talking about the differences of them, and I'm also going to be showing you how I rig them. But I want you to stay tuned to the very end of the video because I'm going to show you a neat little trick that you can do with your DSMB and your reel during your safety stuff. What's up, guys? It's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now, i got a pretty neat video for you today. What we're going to be looking at is different spools, reels, and even SMBs. I'm going to be showing you the differences in them, but I'm going to be showing you multiple ways to rig them, if you will, for carry, meaning how do you clip them off, how do you put them in pockets, things like that. And I'm going to show you several different ways that I do it. Now, I want you to take that to heart there, there are several different ways to do this. There's not just a one way to do it. It may work for you, but there's other ways that may work for somebody else. And I'm going to show you all the different ways I personally set mine up and why I set them up that way. And hopefully this will help you in the future as well. All right, guys, before we get too far into this, we do need to look at the difference between, say, a spool and an actual reel and what the two difference is. This is actually a finger spool. Basically a finger spool can either be aluminum or metal or some type of plastic. This one just happens to be Delrin plastic and it's got a certain length of line. Now they come in all different lengths from a 25 to a 50 to a 75 all the way up to 100 or 150 foot uh, worth of line on a finger spool and they are really designed just to shoot things from underwater. You can tie off if you're doing jumps in caves and caverns or you can use them inside of a wreck. However, they're not really designed for that as a main guideline. Now, uh, actual reel is gonna have some type of crank handle where you can crank it up. This particular one here, I believe has about 500 feet of line on it. And so we use it inside of wrecks or if I'm mapping something in the lake, I'll actually use this one as well. And then of course, what I use the spool for is either a jump line or I'll use it to shoot an SMB and things like that when I'm underwater. But that's the biggest difference between say a reel and a spool. All right, guys, now let's look at the actual marking buoy, whether it's an SMB or a DSMB. And if you're not familiar with what that stands for, SMB is nothing more than a surface marking buoy. And a DSMB is a delayed surface marking buoy. One is designed to be inflated at the surface, and you can use it for signaling. You can use it for additional flotation, things like that. The other one's actually designed to shoot from underwater. That means you're going to deploy it at a certain depth, and it's going to go up to the surface. Now, you can still do everything at the surface with it that you can with an SMB, but this one is typically going to come with different features such as how do you actually inflate it? Is it an oral inflation? Is it low pressure inflation? Or does it have an open bottle inflation? This particular one has three different ways to inflate it, and of course this is a DSMB. Now the last thing that separates these two, of course, is the dump valve. A DSMB is also going to have a dump valve that you can dump as it comes up. Now, guys, I'm going to show you several different ways that you can rig these spools. But before we do that, I do need to talk about the actual length of the spools. Typically speaking, whatever length you need, whether it's 25 foot if you're using on shallow reefs, whether it's 50 foot if you're shooting it as a deco reel, or even longer if you're doing deeper deco stops, you typically want to get a reel that's 25 foot longer than what you actually need. And let me explain why. If we take a quick look at this reel right here, you will notice that the line is completely full. And this is a 50 foot reel. And as you can tell, the line has completely overtaken these eyelets. That means I'm not going to have access to get into these eyelets because there's too much line. So whatever length you need. If you need 25, you're going to buy a 50. If you need 50, you're going to buy a 75. And then you're actually going to cut off about 25 foot of the line itself. Now, don't throw this line away because you can use it for other things. You can use it to tie on bolt snaps and whatever you need to like that. So we're not going to necessarily throw it away, but we are going to cut off whatever length we don't need. Now, to rig it, the first thing I want to do is tie what I call the three loops. 
And I actually have a little loop at the beginning. I'll show you in a little bit what that's for. I've also got a larger loop, and this larger loop needs to be big enough that the reel itself can go through. And then I'm also going to have a secondary smaller loop at the end, and I'll show you here really quickly what that's for as well. Now, once I've got it tied up like that, I'm going to simply wind it up, and I'm going to wind it up until I get to that first little loop. And wherever that little loop falls, so that little loop is falling right here on this eyelet, I'm going to use that eyelet to stick the remaining excess of the line through, just like so, like that. Now to secure this so that it doesn't come undone, all I'm gonna do is take my double ender here, I'm gonna clip off, and I'm gonna wind the double ender up just like this. And I'm gonna take it all the way to the very end until I have approximately, let's say, three inches left, maybe three and a half inches, something like that. And then the next two loops are going to go through the double ender. And if you can get three loops, you can get three loops in it as well. And then I'm going to release the gate. And just like that, it's nice and secure. And by doing it in this fashion, what that does is it actually keeps tension on the main part of the spool so that tension's not going to allow this to come unraveled. Now, once again, this is how you would do it if you was using this just as a tie-off or maybe you was using this as a jump reel, something like that. You could very easily clip off to a system and not have to worry about it coming undone. Then when you need access, all you got to do is just undo those last three loops, undo the remainder of it there, and then to gain access to this, that's what this secondary loop is here for. So if you're diving in really cold water, thick gloves, maybe dry gloves, this gives you access to actually pull that line back out for use. And like I said, this is what you would use if you were doing this as a tile for reel or maybe some type of jumper reel or something like that. But let's look to see how we do it if you're going to be attaching this to, say, an SMB or a DSMB. Okay guys, so now that we've got the spool rigged up, let's talk about how we attach it here. And I'm actually gonna show you three different methods. Uh, this first method I personally do not use because I actually prefer my reel to be permanently attached to my SMB. Like I said, you may be using this as a jump reel or a tile off reel. It's completely okay not to have them attached, but for what I primarily use them for, I do like these attached. But in that case, if you wanna leave them separate, all you've gotta do is come down here to the ring and you're gonna use the bottom part of your double ender and you're going to simply just clip off to it like so and it's a real simple method it works really easy uh, if you want a little additional security that internal loop that we use to pull it out you could actually go over the top of that as well and that's going to keep permanent tension on there and you don't have to worry about anything However, when you do undo this system, you're still going to have to attach this underwater, and that can be sometimes difficult if you're using dry gloves or something like that. So let me show you what I personally do. On this particular reel here, you will notice that it's already pre-attached to the SMB. And just to show you how we do that, all we're gonna do is take the end of the reel where we have that big loop, and we are going to go through the ring of the DSMB, and then we are going to slide the spool through it, and this basically just creates a girth hitch, okay? And if you're wondering what that outside loop is for, all that is for is so that you can disconnect this if you ever need to. Imagine for a second this loop wasn't here. It'd be very difficult if there was a lot of tension here to actually get that loose over time. So that external loop that we put on there, that's all that's for is just a little pull tab. But now that that's done, I'm going to roll it up. And one of the mistakes that a lot of people will make is they'll get to the end and they will go around the line and they'll go through one of the eyelets like so, okay? Now, the downside to this is it doesn't take much if you're swimming around for this excess line to come off and now you're going to have a major entanglement going on, especially if you're diving, say, in a current or something like that. So now we got to figure out a way that we can actually go in here and secure this and attach it. So I'm going to show you actually two different ways to do this. 
All right, guys, so now that we've attached the SMB or DSMB to the reel itself, let me show you how I actually rig it so it doesn't come loose underwater and create an entanglement hazard. Plus, it makes it easy to deploy when I need to actually use it. Now, since we've got it attached, we're actually going to be using the pull tab loop that's on the outside to do this. So all I'm going to do is simply wind it up all the way until that point, okay? And I want to make sure I keep tension on it when I do this. Now, wherever that pull tab lines up, in this case, it's this eyelet here, I'm just gonna stick that little pull tab through that little loop, like so. And then I'm gonna take my double ender to secure it. I can secure it just like that. Now, the problem here is it can still come undone. So I'm gonna create a final loop in it, and I can either go through my internal pull loop, like so. I can go through the D-ring itself, like so. Or if I want to, I can even go back through the eyelet like that, and now I've got a complete connected system here, and it's not gonna allow any loose line to come off. It's gonna permanently keep tension on it. Now, I personally don't come back through the eyelet, and I'm gonna show you real briefly why, because all it takes is this to be pushed down, and it can very easily break free. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna teach you, once you deploy it, how easy it is for that to break free if you don't secure it properly. So I actually do not put that extra little spin in it, but that's typically how I do it. I wind it up, put it through the loop, put it through the second loop, and then clip it also to the metal D-ring, and it's nice and secure. When I need it, it's a very simple one, two, three process. There was step one. Step two is I just simply pull it, and then, of course, step three is I deploy it. All right, guys, there is an alternative method to that, but it's very similar in nature. What we're going to do is we're going to come up here to the top where our little pull loop is, and we're going to fold it up, and we're going to create a measurement. And right where it measures onto the line, in this case here, we're going to create a second loop by creating a bite in the line, just like that. Now, this loop will actually be what we stick through the eyelet of the spool, and it will also be what we connect here to create our complete system here so it doesn't come undone. So I'm gonna wind it all the way up until that loop meets up with an eyelet. In this case, it's this eyelet here. I'm gonna squeeze it through like so. And I'm gonna use this loop once again, and this loop, and I'm gonna use the D-ring itself. And by doing so, now you will see there is a complete looped system in there that's gonna keep permanent tension on this line so as it's hanging on to a D-ring, it's going to have permanent tension, and it's not going to allow this line to come loose underwater. Say if you're in a current or a heavy, um, a heavy sea or whatnot, it's not going to come up free and create an entanglement hazard. Once again, when it's ready to deploy, it's a three-step process. Step one is just simply removing the double ender. Step two is pulling it out. Step three is, of course, deploying it. All right, guys, I want to show you a neat little trick really quick and show you one of the mistakes I see a lot of divers make is let's say that you've deployed your SMB here and you need to tie off. Maybe you're doing a safety stop or a deco stop or something like that. Well, one of the things that I'll see a lot of divers do is they'll just simply clip off to the line and they'll clip off to one of the eyelets like so. Now, obviously, you can tell there's tension on here, but it doesn't take much force at all. If I just take this, and I'm not even going to touch the gate area. If I simply take this and fold it in, you will see it very easily pops off. And I didn't even have to use my thumb to do that. It did it by itself. So one of the things that I like to do to prevent that from happening is I'll put just a little twist in the line like that. Okay, that's going to help lock that into position. And now when I clip off, I'm still going to have the same issue, okay? I'll still have the same issue of it coming undone. However, if I, instead of allowing it to dangle like that, if I simply pull it up and put two loops in the top, now it's going to keep the double ender tensioned upwards, and it's not going to allow that to fold off. And I can keep it locked off without the risk of it causing any type of entanglement or prematurely coming unattached.
All right, guys, I also want to show you a, a neat little honorable mention. This one does happen to be by Mares, but there's several different companies that make these. This is what I use when I'm teaching open water students. So we're not out there teaching divers to be technical divers in the open water program. Um, and I actually prefer a system like this for open water divers, even if you're just on a nice warm tropical reef, because it's an all-in-one system. you got your DSMB here. You've, got, of course, got your finger spool here. And I believe this is a 50-foot spool that comes with it. And, of course, you get a double ender with it as well. Now, the good thing about this method here is you don't actually have to cut off any excess line to make this work. Now, this DSMB actually has a double ender and a clip that comes with it as well, but you'll notice where the spool is. The spool comes in its own very little pocket here on the side of the, the DSMB, and if I pull it out, you also notice that this particular one is already pre-attached. There's another D-ring on the inside that I can actually leave this spool pre-attached to it. And all you've got to do is just simply roll it up and then you can stow it back in its little pouch area and it makes it very, very convenient. Now, another thing that I'll actually use this one for is inside a side mount pouch. So I can put it inside my side mount pouch and I don't have to worry about anything coming loose. I don't have to worry about multiple items that I'm gonna have to clip off and then when I go to take them, I'll run the risk of losing them. It's an all-in-one unit and I can simply stick it, in, stick it in the pouch, clip it off to a piece of bungee, or even if I'm clipping it off to say the butt D-ring on my harness, something like that, it's a very neat, compact system, and it's actually ready to go, ready to deploy. I can simply just unclip it, pull out the spool itself, open up the SMB, and deploy it as normal. So here you go, guys. That's all my SMBs, my DSMBs, my reels, and my finger spools. And yes, I use every single one of these for different things. My rec reel I use for wrecks, caverns, and caves. Of course, most of these SMBs and DSMBs are used for open water classes or deep diving, things like that, even decompression diving. And then, of course, my favorite DSMBs are the ones that have three different inflation methods, whether it's oral inflation or if it's, say, a low-pressure uh, hose inflation or even the bottom inflation as well. And the reason I like these is they work great for public safety diving and salvage diving because when I'm wearing a full face mask, I don't have the ability to take it off to orally inflate. So these work really good to just take an alternate or a, a, another second stage and inflate them. Or I can even use my dry suit inflator hose to do that as well. So I really like these. Um, and then of course, these are just some cheaper uh, SMBs that I use for training for students and things like that. And I've got a bunch of them just kind of laid around. And then I do have several jump reels. We do a lot of tie-offs in the lake. We run a lot of line to different things. So these work really good just for quick tie-offs and things like that. But there's a lot of different methods out there. I would encourage you to experiment and see what works best for you. If you like the tech method of doing it, if you like the PSD method of doing it, or whatever method works for you, that's what I would encourage you to do, but I would also encourage you to try different methods because there's going to be different situations. One of my favorite methods, of course, was the second alternative version that I showed you for PSD. However, that can be difficult if you have too much line or you're dealing with thick gloves. So having an alternative version that you can use from time to time really comes in handy. Guys, if you got any questions on SMBs, DSMBs, reels, spools, things like that, drop me a comment down below and I'll try to answer it the best I can and as quickly as I can as well. As a matter of fact, if you would like for me to produce a video showing you how to deploy these underwater and how we hold trim and things like that, let me know down in the comment section below and I'll try to get you a video out for that as well. But guys, if you enjoyed the video, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it. That's going to do it for today. So until our next one, take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, guys, you just thought that video was over. I've actually got another little trick I'm going to show you. And this is one that we made a video on many, many years ago, but it kind of goes along with what we're talking about. So I want to show you a neat little trick that you can do with your spool or reel system to help you out there in safety stops. Now, let's say that you're doing a shipwreck dive or you're on a nice coral reef and you're coming up for a safety stop, but there's still a current. Now, you may need to deploy your DSMB and hang out at 15 feet for around three minutes. But let's say worst case scenario, you have a computer failure. How are you going to know that you're actually at 15 feet for that safety stop? Well, one of the tricks that I've done for many years 
is I'll take my spool and I'll pull out approximately say 15 to 20 foot of line. And you can just measure it out in whatever method that you wanna measure it out. But once you get to that mark, you're actually going to cut your line and you can add a fishing swivel in it. And as a swivel, you're just gonna have two little attachment points, but it's gonna allow that line to actually swivel. Now, if you do this, say at that 15 to 20 foot mark, as you deploy this thing to the surface, that's going to mark that 15 foot. Now, another great scenario would, you might be in a situation where you don't have a dive mask. Maybe your computer, your depth gauge does work, but you can't see because you had a mass failure. By simply deploying this up, as you come up the line, you'll be able to feel where that swivel is and you can very easily know where your 15 foot safety stop is. Now, of course, you could just tie a knot in the line if you want, but I've always personally liked the little swivels because, hey, you're gonna be cutting off some of the line anyways, as we discussed earlier, because a lot of times manufacturers send way too much line on these spools.